Ladies and gentlemen, it is approximately 10.10 10 p.m. Eastern Time in the United States. 
And everybody's freaking out because Elon Musk just appointed the new CEO of Twitter. And her background is questionable. My guest tonight is the host of the New Nation podcast, Mike Lerner, who we'll bring on in a moment as we discuss these things. I was just out in Australia talking to very beautiful women. I told you they're all nines here, right? This is, these are some very hot ladies. I'll let you decide which ones are ladies and which ones are lady boys. We have a street content coming back up. We have a great show tonight. We have so much to discuss. Let's get down. a great show for you guys my name is elijah schaefer and i am your top 17 host we have uh yes thank you thank you thank you we have such a great show uh you've seen him before he's been on he's formerly the host of the i'm doing Get great podcast or i'm doing gay podcast i don't know what it is mike Lerner. welcome uh back to nightly offensive wow thank you so much thank you it's great yeah. to be back so it's great happened? to be gay again yeah it is great to be it's a great day to be gay I and mean, look at that right i mean that is a. Uh, that is, I told everyone that everyone's a nine in Australia. I don't think I was referencing it's trans sorely people. mistaken. Ah, uh, yeah. Because the one in the hat, no, that's not a, doesn't get past the two, I don't think. The one on her left has the, I'm going to go out and protest Trump haircut. Uh, the one with the red hair, is that a trans? Um, I don't oh uh, yeah i'm that's a dude that's for sure that's got to be a dude that's either okay, that yeah, or that's madonna see. that does look a little bit mm. like madonna i had my monitor a little bit further away oh you know who it looks like it looks like judd apatow's wife yeah yeah leslie does. mann it leslie mann it's really she took the name too. literally <laughs> <laughs> dude so how are Can you doing bro by the way, I just good, want to man. say, I want to hear how you're doing because, you know, you had the I'm Doing Great podcast. You just changed it to yeah. the, the, the New Nation podcast. The New what Nation, that that's right. Well, you know, it's the thing with having uh, two co-hosts and uh, sometimes people, they want to do different things and uh, we, we we allow people to do different things and uh, the, the, the show was going in maybe one direction and I was bringing in one direction and... Uh, we just decided to split. I don't want to deal in too much drama, and it was an amicable split, and we're still friends. And for people wondering, oh, who is he talking about? Go look it up. Go look it up. I'm not here to dish tea or whatever the young kids say. I'm not here to do that. No, but it's we're nice. Not here to do that. Everybody's friends. Yes. Every well, everybody is friends, and the thing is, anybody who's into dishing tea is usually just the loser, and that's the the, the quite quite frankly where we're at. And we got to talk about the genuine, you know, authenticity of what's going on because. As you sure. know, the uh, the free speech bastion of uh, the future was supposed to be Twitter. It was supposed to be where, you know, uh, Tucker Carlson's launching his new show at 8 p.m. Eastern time. It was uh, Twitter TVs coming out. Everyone was excited because Elon Musk was uh, ready to launch the frontier of challenging the globalist empire through this acquisition. And then he appoints a new Twitter CEO, which we'll get into in a second who happens to be on a chair of a committee at the World Economic Forum, which, if that yep. doesn't worry you, this is what they thought was entertainment. She gets confetti. Jesus, I just blaspheme. Oh, 
I swear one time I took like nine vodka shots and I put on the same performance for Kez. Is that the is that the <laughs> new uh, CEO of Twitter, the chair, the guy playing the guitar? <laughs> Who's in the chair? Let me see. <laughs> it's so good, right? You can't make <laughs> this up. They were playing two different songs. She was singing a different song. He was playing a different song. <laughs> But I guess, see, see, that's the thing, right? If you're a lizard person, you don't really have any good taste in music or really sense of pitch or key. So they probably thought it was great. Yeah. Legitimately speaking, I just want to remind people, she is on the chair of the World Economic Forum, but we are going to talk about the story because it is uh, pretty intense. I want to remind you guys as we jump into this, the show is brought to you by Locals, Elijah Schaefer.locals.com. It's a community. It's where you join. It's where you support the show. It's how you meet other cool people. We have a great group of SOB, slightly offensive backers who are in there right now. You get the exclusive chat. You know that you're in there right now and you're talking. I can't put the chat up on the screen because last time you guys got me in trouble, but it's uncensored. You can send your memes. We have an after show. We talk. We discuss. If you're not joining the community, it's free. And also, if you want to support this show and you want to keep it going, keep independent media and journalism alive because as you saw, I am- uh, Go support I, it. Yeah, you got to get the click, click, click the thing. But also, uh, you know, I, I went out and did the street video and I had a guy do an outro with me on the street video and he said, yeah, man, like whatever it is to support this guy, support him because like look at how he's dressed. He looks like, he looks like cheap clothing. He looks poor. And I was like, it's pretty demoralizing, but it's true. So. <laughs> oh, man. Check, check uh, were you out. wearing your own merch? I was wearing this. I'm in the same outfit I was out doing. It's a different day. It's Saturday today. Oh, is that a Yellowstone? Is that Yellowstone merch of the show or of no. the, from the geographical city. location? From the geographical location. Okay. The Yellowstone National Park. Save, yes. the, save the parks. <laughs> Support slightly offensive and then save the parks, please. Yeah, and don't forget to click the link in the bio uh, to be able to follow Mike. Let's get into this. There's crazy things happening in the Matrix. Please. Let's talk about the Twitter Please. CEO. Uh, is free speech over? I don't know. Elon Musk welcomes the new CEO of Twitter. Says, I'm excited to welcome Linda Yaccarino. Yaccarino, I have no idea. It doesn't matter. She's the new CEO of Twitter. Linda Yak will focus primarily on business operations while I focus on the product design and new technology. Looking forward to working with Linda to transform this platform into X, the everything app. He's excited. And uh, as we hear the initial, the initial announcement, if people aren't thinking this is irrelevant, like why are we talking about this? Well, this is, I think, kind of important for several reasons. One of which being the fact that there, every social media app is basically uh, Gestapo, right? They, they, they do everything in their power. Since, since two years ago on Blaze, if I, don't open up, if I don't upload shorts, I lose 110 subscribers a day, like almost exactly. It's like a bleed. And YouTube has just had so many issues with this channel, right? It's demonetized, et cetera. Uh, and you have the same problem too on your podcast. It's like they, you, you get in trouble yeah. once something happens and they come against you. And it's like, we really wish that these tech companies were concerned more about just allowing content creators to voice their opinions. And they were about policing opinions, but we can't have nice things, Mike. Well, no. Also, I have the right opinion. So that's what makes me frustrated. I don't know if you know this, Elijah, but I think that free speech is gay. I don't really think that people should be able to say whatever they want. And I don't think that you should be able to fight to defend the right for anyone to say whatever they want. I support pedophilia. You know what, dude? You're like, I don't agree, but like, I'm going to fight for your right to say that. No, free speech is gay. I have the right opinion. Don't censor me, please. That's it. Yeah, that's actually true. I'm against free speech as well. Uh, and speaking of that, people, pe <laughs> people, people brought this up, right? People were concerned yeah. because she's being brought in as the new CEO, which means that she will have decision making, uh, power in the company. And it's important to me because we don't have a lot of, of say, so we only had this and people brought up, let's get into her past a little bit. Why people are concerned. Uh, people were surfacing pictures from her, from her social media. And this is her in one of the the uh pink is she we'll p say, hat is yeah, she the, in the p hat that's her yeah oh i don't like the other lady when you got the smile with the teeth you know what i mean you can't trust that you also can't trust the p hat but um yeah physiognomy i guess that just makes that that makes sense i don't like it it's like me and you if we were trans 
Well, technically, I mean, wait, me if okay, so we would be trans women. Yes, that's quote on trans. Look at, look at, we would be fake you. women. That's you in the pink hat, and then that's me. Really? Well, do you smile? How do you smile? Because she's she's got the teeth on the lip smile. I don't know. I don't smile because I, I have pretty bad smiles like this. <laughs> do you know the gummy? Do you know the gums when people smile and they're that's, all gums and like no teeth syndrome. like that? Oh really? Yeah, yeah. That's unfortunate. That means your mom oh. used a liquor. She didn't care enough about Ooh. you to not drink. No good. <laughs> I don't like that. All right, we got to bring up a couple other things. So, um, I'm not gonna, cr- I'm not criticizing her right on this stuff, but she was obviously she's her personal life. These are from her personal things. She was also really big on people, you know, masking up and whatnot. A lot of people were concerned about this. I'm not concerned about this personally because I was a big supporter of masks. I'm still a big supporter of masks. I tell people sometimes I can't sleep at night because people aren't wearing masks. It makes me sad. I wish we wore more of them. I wish we put them on parts of our body they weren't meant for. I wish we used them. I wish we ate them. I wish we cooked with them. And then sometimes I wish that we would smoke them. But this is what she had to say. Hey, everybody, Linda Yaccarino here, class of 1980. We're not here to talk about that. We are here to talk about masking up or packing up. I promise you, we're doing good so far. Just keep your distance, get your hands washed often, get tested often, and wear your mask. That'll get us closer and closer to normal days. We are resilient. We are tough. Keep doing it. And we'll be back at Beaver Stadium before you know it. Mask up or pack up. We're almost there. We are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know what happened to our guest. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Lindy Yak. <laughs> he disappeared. No, he's connecting back in. Um, he, he'll connect back in, I guess. That's the reality of it. But here he is. He's gone. All right. So. I just happened to find it to be quite interesting. Uh, there he is. Now he's back. We're back. We I'm go? back. Yeah. yeah. I'm doing great. I'm doing fine. I'm not anymore. <laughs> no, but I, you know, <laughs> like what I, what I think is ironic here, like let's, let's have a real discussion about this because I don't want this to be boring and I want to have a, a genuine, not reactionary side of things. Cause I, I feel like the show's always been in a good position to not just take the right or the left wing side. Number one, I hate people who don't take the left or the right wing side and think that they're morally superior. Like, well, she's partly left and partly right and doesn't stand for anything and she stands for nothing. So she must be the right choice. I'm not saying that. That's stupidity. Sometimes you need to just choose a side and you need to, you need to fight for something. But I also want to say, you know, people that start freaking out and are like, oh my gosh, she was like a very big pro masker and she was, you know, a, a pink pussy hat person or whatever. Dude. Do you know who was into this stuff? Donald Trump. So, like, I, I, mean, I know they say he wasn't in the end, but, I mean, he, he pushed Operation Warp Speed, and, and he was also into this. And also, like, a lot of these individuals who, you know, were out, and I, and I hate to say this too, people that are like, oh my gosh, she's very pro-jab, she's very pro all these things, you know, the right wing has this reactionary statement. So is Elon Musk. Does no one know that? Elon Musk was very pro all these things. Am I saying that I like that? Am I saying... That that makes me happy. No, it doesn't. But Elon Musk has had a bit of a turnaround in terms of his perspective on free speech and his views on mRNA, his views on the whole response here, all this stuff clearly didn't affect the way that he handled Twitter. So while I'm not like, I'm not like, oh, this is such a great choice for CEO. I also like, if you're going to get mad at her for this, then you've also got to hold Elon accountable. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a kind of a different way of looking at it where you can't just jump to a conclusion. Maybe I'm off on this one, but I mean, Donald Trump and Elon Musk have the, basically the same positions. You can find the same videos of them doing the, the same things. Yeah. I'd also say I really have no dog in the fight because I really don't use Twitter. I don't have many followers. I post to it rarely. And the only time that I do, it's because I want to make a text post that I can screenshot and put onto Instagram, which I really could just do the same thing in Instagram. But I like how it has my little profile picture and the time and the date and from where I made the tweet. So that's the only reason why I use Twitter. Like I said, free speech is gay. And I don't care to be on there because I find it to be a cesspool no matter who's running it. 
Yeah, and I and well, I would agree, but I also I always just like to go. I used to like to go on Twitter to to bully blue checks, but but then I became a blue check. Now everybody, yeah, eight dollars, and now we all are. So people used to give me crap, like, "Oh, shut up, blue check," but now we all are. And speaking of that, she also, you know, more videos. She did the washing hands challenge. I'm just, I'm sorry to put you guys through this, but this was. Now what you hear is not a test, I'm rapping to the beat. And me, the crew, and my friends are gonna try to move your feet. See, I am Wonder Mike, and I like to say hello. Or to the black, to the white, the red, and the brown, and the purple, and yellow. But first, I got a bang, bang, the boogie to the boogie. Say, up, jump, the boogie to the bang, bang, boogie, let's rock. You don't stop, rock the rhythm, that'll make your body rock. Well, so far, you heard my voice. It's the one thing that like frustrates me about boomers is they don't know how to use the technology that they're running. Like she could have used an Instagram reel or story or TikTok to put the actual audio over the video so it didn't sound like it was playing in her home. That's probably the most offensive part of that video. <laughs> it was like the fact that she used a but like she also had her she had her son. Hey, can you connect and she she said the Bluetooth, right? Not Bluetooth. Can you connect the Bluetooth to my to my phone, please? <laughs> I need to play yeah. a, and then she and then the best part was is like the video started and it was like check out the new Fileo Fish Fridays. Fileo Fish Fridays at McDonald's, 549 for two Fileo fishes. And then went hip hop to the hip itty because she like you know like it's like <laughs> she's rich, really? but she doesn't know how to yeah. pay for like Spotify premium. You know what I'm talking about? Like rich boomers, like yeah. like I'll meet people who make hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars a year, and like I'm like in their car and we're listening to like Pandora radio commercials. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. ma'am you made six hundred and ten thousand dollars in the last three months you think you could afford nine dollars a month no they can't or at least an intern behind the camera who knows what she's doing because we know it's not a dude we know that if she had an intern or assistant it'd be some like 25 year old woman who graduated from stanford but i didn't see the last video because i froze i wasn't doing so great and i froze but she sounded to me like she's from like long island or the tri-state area and she's very italian how did she get she's this definitely, job i think she's new york She's, mm. well, 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 we'll talk about that. But before we jump into that, guys, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor for today. As you guys know, I love a good smoke and many of you guys do, but there's a lot of mess. There's a smell, there's additives. It's not good for your throat, although I do love a good smoke. Uh, and you want that nicotine buzz and maybe you're trying to stop smoking and you want an alternative. Well, I have good news for you. I want to talk to you about Pixatine, which are nicotine infused toothpicks you can use anywhere that come in amazing flavors. Right there, such as uh, such as the Winter Fresh, the cinnamon, the tobacco. They're small, they're affordable, they fit in your pocket, and there's no restrictions. It's a great alternative to smoking, vaping, or chewing. And right now, if you go to pixotine.com slash Elijah, that's P-I-X-O-T-I-N-E dot com slash E-L-I-J-A-H. That's pixotine.com slash Elijah. You can get 20% off the entire store. Again, you can use these when you fly. You can use these on a train, on a plane, in an automobile. I'd like them, Sam. I am. You can eat them with green eggs and ham, but I don't advise you to eat them. I advise you, if you're 21 or older, to check it out. Feel free to realize as well that if you know somebody who smokes and you want them to do something different, maybe you have a newborn around and you're not allowed to smoke in front of your baby. Uh, maybe you have a pregnant spouse and you're not supposed to be smoking in front of them. I don't know. But these are amazing alternatives, and Josh Lacash and a few people I know have used these as alternatives to stop other bad habits. So I would encourage you to check them out because they are delicious. They're not nutritious, but of course they do work and they give you that nicotine buzz. If you're 21 and older, go to pixatine.com slash Elijah. Click the link in the bio, send it to a friend, and get it today. Uh, like you mentioned, Mike, though, you were saying that how uh, she sounds like she's from Long Island. The truth is, yeah, she's a big, she's a big, city, uh, she's a big city woman. Some people in the chat were saying she's kind of thick, though. I don't know how I feel about I feel it makes me feel uncomfortable that people were thinking about that. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter if she's thick. It's the face. If she has a good face and she's that thick, that's okay. But uh, it's her face for me. So no, it gets a no. Oh, hey, look at that. The new Nation podcast. Go follow us on Instagram. Hey. Yeah, that's pretty nice. You got you gotta, your own little... Dude, you know what? It's Because you know now because you produce, pr pressing all these buttons yeah. myself sometimes, it's like really hard. It's like there's, so, there's literally... I, let's see. There's six... 12 i have I 37 little, buttons to press 
Yeah, I got I got a button here. I have my A10 controller over there, so it's 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 fun. It's fun. Sometimes I've I've done podcasts where I've had the camera on me while the guest is speaking for about three minutes, and I forget. I have to switch over to them, but I'm a bit of a narcissist, so I don't mind. Have you ever seen one of these? What's that? It's an ergonomic hand controller. It's like a stream deck, but Whoa. you put your hand on it, and you can so you can memorize where your hands are, so you never have to. So when you're doing the cameras. It's all on your right hand, and the rest of it's on your left hand, you know, over here. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, you know who taught me wow. that is uh, Gary from the Next News Network, which, by the way, if you guys want to know, I am a pundit on the Next News Network on Wednesdays and Thursdays. That's pretty cool. You should check it out. All right. Let's, yeah. let's look at this. Um, another thing about her that I find to be very interesting about this uh, mm -hmm. good old person was that she uh, is a chairwoman for the World Economic Forum, which, by mm -hmm. the way... I love, I love this. I love this for her because I feel like if you were successful and you weren't on the World Economic Forum, then I'm assuming you eat babies, right? Because there's like two yep. paths to like, to, to global control. It's like globalist removing your rights and making you eat bugs or making, yep. or you eat babies in pizza parlors. No, I'm just kidding. But no, but, but I mean, I mean, realistically speaking, now we know the type of woman she is. She's like a globalist. She plays the system, the corporate ladder. At least we know. Like, she's out in the open, right? There's no, like, secret money or, like, family ties. It's just like, hey, I'm a globalist, World Economic Forum, a, like, leader, and that's why I have power. And she definitely has blackmail tapes out there somewhere. A hundred. Well, she's thick, though, so... Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Also, to the viewers out there, I don't have jaundice, just in case you guys are wondering why my skin might be a certain hue. It's the, it's the, it's the orange light that's up here, and I'm scared to turn it off because it's the main source of light. Yeah. Um, I don't mind that because, dude, you know what? There's – I I have some my, – my lights change hues, so I, I make my lights whiter because I'm naturally pink, so I make them try to balance out mm. the fact that I'm a pink lobster. Uh, but in yeah. this in this uh, mo modus operandi, uh, what she says there is that she says, I mean, let me actually go to her article. This is a blog post she wrote, right? So this is for LinkedIn. Uh, some of the things that I thought were weird was that in her blog post, she said, transformation is happening whether we like it or not. I'm not sure I feel comfortable with that statement. <laughs> I like, didn't know people wrote blog posts on LinkedIn. So this yeah. is this is all really concerning. <laughs> I didn't know, dude. I didn't know either, my friend. Wow. Thanks for laughing, by the way. I'm I'm at a point where I need the laughter. You're not laughing anymore? No, no, no. I just need the laughter. You know? I so depressed. I feel like if I do, if I stop laughing, then I lose. That's my been my motto forever. When you stop laughing, so. you lose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I stole that from Gavin McGinnis, actually. Oh, really? What a good guy to steal from. He's got some knowledge. Mm -hmm. I have a show on Censored TV, so if you guys want to watch that show, it's on there. I probably have to change the name of it, so I don't really want to say it right now. You could find it, but I don't want to say it because I'm in the middle of a rebrand. Elijah, you understand? Oh, I understand. I, I've thought about going over to Censored TV. I, I like Gavin. Mm. I've, th I've thought about I've thought about doing a show on there before. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, why not? I don't know. Yeah. We'll Why not? What happens. All right, get, get, get into this blog post. Right. I'm curious to see yeah, what yeah. else she has to say. So she talks about trust matters. The future of work is now our present. Uh, be prepared to move fast, right? But what's interesting too is number four, is she was big on diversity is not just something good, it's the right thing to do. And this is where we see these global leaders uh, connecting morality to, you know, to these like progressive ideas. I've always said this, Progressivism isn't dangerous because it's an alternate set of ideas. Progressivism is dangerous because it's a replacement for morality and religious ideology. Um, and that's what makes it so uh, dogmatic and its adherence so, so zealous and radical. You know, if you were just presenting alternative ideas, like, and I, and I might be okay with this. If I was in a, if I was in a, a workplace environment and I'm the CEO, um, I mean, I've hired a lot of minorities. I'm probably the biggest respecter of minorities, females, and of uh, the minority communities in general in the world. I probably have hired more of them than anybody in this world. Um, is is people say diversity helps, right? I mean, and they say, okay, like, hey, you know, let's just say 
30% of the Republican voting bloc is Hispanic, and it would be really good if you got a Spanish-speaking woman to come on the show and do a show, uh, do a podcast in Spanish, and it would attract more viewers. Fine. I don't mind that idea. Diversity, money, you get more viewers. You have a Spanish-speaking person. Like, that's just a very basic mathematical equation. It's just we have, you know, an open market. They want to listen in Spanish. You need someone that speaks Spanish. Boom. Gotcha. However, that's not what diversity is about. Diversity is never about how do we just make more money. Diversity is about even if we lose money, we push diversity because it's morally correct. It is the right thing to do. It is how we succeed. And even if it hurts your end goal, business is not about making money. It's about being correct and about, about following your religion. And that's dangerous because then you start hiring people who suck at their jobs and who end up literally being shitheads simply because they're diverse. And I think it ruins a, mer a meritocracy in this, you know, this environment to where you, you don't even believe people are in their jobs or their school positions or anything because they earned it. And you're like, well, it's just because you're a black woman, you know? So that's, that's the reason. I couldn't have said it any better. I mean, when, any, when anyone brings up the word diversity, especially in a corporate setting, I used to work for Ralph Lauren. So I remember doing these diversity, DEI sort of, uh, I don't know, what, what do they call them? Training exercises that you would have to do for whatever reason. I worked in retail. I worked in a store. For In no situation did I ever have to deal with, let's say, any sort of uh, racial uh, tone policing or like sexual tone policing whatsoever. I, I think this is just an in for people to make money as diversity trainers and for the corporation to fill boxes and to make sure that every one of those boxes is checked just so that they don't get canceled. But... I, 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 I agree with what you said. And I mean, look at look at what's happened to, let's say, the GOP or the Republican Party or the mainstream conservative movement or the big tent is as as what I like to call them. It's not good. It's not good. You don't need a wide array of diverse people to be under one big tent of ideas just because of diversity itself. Now, look at what you've got. You've got drag queens you've got like the drag queen maga drag queens and you've got gays and you've got trans you now call themselves conservative which is anti-conservative it leads to the slippery slope okay okay you want to be diverse great now you start hiring horrible people not so good now your business starts tanking up oh, another domino has fallen where does it end it's not good like you said it's following a religion yeah and i think what people are most nervous about with her is that she also is the head of like advertising with NBC and she basically has already interviewed Musk and kind of pushed him to say that you should start listening to advertisers about content moderation. Now, previously, tech companies had, had said they weren't doing this. They had said they, they were not using moderators. Uh, they were not using advertisers were not affecting uh, content moderation, right? That they were policing based on like, mm -hmm. their core set of terms of service. It seems like that's not true. Listen to what she had to say during this interview. Will you commit to be a little more uh, specific and not tweet after 3 a.m.? People in this room would, would like to see that. Um, we'll make them feel more I will, confident. I will aspire to, to tweet uh, less after 3 a.m. But I mean, it, it is important that, you know, I mean, if I were to say, yes, you can influence me, that would be wrong. That would be very wrong. Let me, that would be a diminishment of freedom of speech. But I want to be specific about influencing. It's more of an open feedback loop for the advertising experts in this room to help develop Twitter into a place where they will be excited about investing more money, product development, yeah. ad safety, sure. content moderation. That's what the influence is. Yeah. Will you commit? You hear that content moderation? Yeah. That's what the influence is. They do you want to do you commit to letting advertisers Coca Cola control what's allowed on the on the website? And that's just what I think is absolutely insane about republicanism and this blind support for corporate entities. They hate you, and people are, people are like, "But I really want to support businesses. Why? What? These corporations <laughs> literally hate you. They hate you because they go. You go. Well, it's not really profitable, but it is." Because of ESG scores, right? So if, if you want to borrow more money, if you want to be involved in universal global trade, then you need to hit a certain score, on an ESG mm -hmm. score, which is your environmental impact, your social justice impact. And so you go, I don't understand. I don't understand why Anheuser-Busch or InBev, the company, would, 
would somehow pair up with Dylan Mulvaney and then lose, you know, corporate sales of 24% in the United States. Well, the reason why they're willing to take that risk is because they were frat boy, like, like the head of advertising said, they were, they were frat boy uh, images of, of that company with girls in bikinis and nice boobs and butts and guys drinking and getting drunk and being rowdy and being, you know, this whole like image of traditional like American pie sexuality. And there, that doesn't align with the future of what would make you eligible for loans, uh, funding through international monetary funds, through future global currency and cryptocurrency, not like independent blockchain, but like universal cryptocurrency like uh, the U.S. dollar. They said, if you want to be a part of this, you need to hit this certain benchmark. That benchmark means that a certain amount of your energy needs to be from renewables, a certain amount of your products need to be from recycled material, and you need to, one of the main things from BlackRock, Vanguard, and these corporations is that you need to be a certain amount of diversity and appeal to LGBTQ people. And so while you sit on the sidelines going like, I don't understand what you mean. Like, why do corporations want influence on the content is because that's where the country and the world is headed is that corporations want all the power and they want to influence what you can say, what you can do. They're not going green because they care about the environment. They're going green so they can be a member of the cabal and the cabal wants more membership because once you have all the money and all the producers of money, you actually control the people because what do people need to eat? What do people need to survive? They need money. What do content producers need to share the truth? Money. And if you can control, if they get money based on how they speak, you literally control information and you control the whole world. And it's like a very genius global dominant strategy that requires no bombs, no missiles. All it does is require you to control the flow of money. And that's why they do what they do. Maybe people knew that. Maybe you didn't know that till today. But that's what an ESG score is. That's what's going on. Yeah, I'm going to offer some maybe a different perspective and maybe some non-intellectual observations that I had while watching that. And there are two. One is in that clip, she's she now appears to be ethnically ambiguous. Now she looks brown. <laughs> so, like, yeah, what happened? The first two videos, she seemed like she was, you know, some Long Island Italian woman. The second observation is, can we all acknowledge that Mark Wahlberg will at one time in the future be able to play Elon Musk in a biopic? Let's look at Elon again. And if you don't see Mark Wahlberg, I think there might be something wrong with you. Yeah, do we are we bringing him up? A picture of Elon yeah, Musk? Yeah, well, no. Yeah, can we bring back that video just so you can yeah. see it again? Oh, yeah, here we go. Are we playing That's Mark it? Wahlberg. That would be very wrong. Yeah, that's Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> <laughs> Am Mark I wrong? Mark Wahlberg is playing Elon Musk? Yeah, oh, I think so. Oh, my gosh. Say hello to your mother for me. Mm-hmm. And someone, said, someone said it's all for our safety. Elijah, why do you strive for an unsafe world? Yeah, I know. I know, guys. I know. It's all so sad. It's, it is. And there's a little more to this, too. We'll, we'll, we'll jump off this subject in a second. Uh, but but I also, I also want to say with uh, what's kind of absolutely amazing about this is people that are like, he hired her, I believe, realistically. I don't want to get on the right wing you know, train of like, he hired her because she's a World Economic Forum uh, leader. I think this is why he hired her uh, because – Watch this. This is, this is if you could pick up about thirty seconds into this, why he hired her. This is going to make sense to you. Here's the thing about Linda Yaccarino. You may not see her behind the desk at today or in front of the camera on MSNBC, but you definitely know her work. Because if there's one person at NBC Universal who makes every story, every segment, every show possible. Well, that is Linda. We call her Yak because we like that. A lot of other people look at her accomplishments simply by the numbers. The thousands of partnerships, the tens of billions of dollars, a platform that reaches hundreds of millions of viewers. But here's what it means to all of us. Linda, your transformative leadership and innovative thinking are the reason we're able to reach so many people around the world. You play a pivotal role in elevating the voices of so many strong women across NBC Universal. Women like me. Like me. Like me. Like me. Like me. Like me. me. Like me. Women like us. Yeah, whether it's on our news programs or during the Olympics, in advertising, or for people across our company. So here's the real number that defines your career. One. 
When you brought all the company's networks together as one portfolio, you made us all part of one team, one family, and that set a new industry standard. They're all just happy because their paychecks were guaranteed in a time when network television was failing. And I'll just say that's, mm -hmm. that's to me what I got from that was that she's genius at profitability and funding and that she basically took unprofitable independent companies, brought them together under, you know, obviously they're under NBC Universal, but she brought them as one yeah. portfolio and did the smart thing, which by the way, I'm going to say this to you. This is what networks do but we should think about this about independent creators is like, that's what you might have to start doing is just being like, Hey, we're going to like, we have 10 people and we're just going to sell an at you an ad and it's going to play on all 10 shows. And we're going to pay out yeah. the individuals based on how many views they get. But like, maybe it's hard to get views when you only have 5,000 views, but we can still pay you for those because we're selling you with someone with 20, someone with 30, someone with 10, and altogether, we're right. selling it at a rate of like 200,000 views. And that's a very smart yeah. business deal. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it, it's a tra it would be an attractive reason to hire someone as a CEO. Like, I, I'm, I'm very ignorant when it comes to these matters, uh, specifically with something like Twitter. As I said, I have no dog in this fight, and I don't really do any research into it. But I, I'm wondering, this is a legitimate question, does Elon Musk need a CEO? Right, he, he does need one, right? So someone like this is an attractive get as a CEO if he's looking to make Twitter more profitable. Uh, however, if I saw that video as a pitch for a CEO, I'd skip it and go to the next one just based on those women's testimonies. <laughs> it's, it's, dude, it's so, it's like, thank you. Thank you, Yak. And thank you. I hate corporatism so much. It makes me, it makes my blood boil. <laughs> it really does. I don't like it. That's why I don't no longer work in it. Yeah, I don't work in it either. And guys, as we jump into the next segment, I want to remind you to check out fastgrowingtrees.com slash so you know the drill it is about springtime and it means that you got to plant your garden you've got to start planting your own fruit you know what's happening in this world you know that you've had that one area of your yard that looks like it's dead and you want to put a tree you know you've been wanting to grow your own fruit you've been wanting to have lemons and, and oranges and different things maybe even some shade uh even on your balcony some plants indoor plants it brings life check out fastgrowingtrees.com slash so and get 15 percent off the entire store. What you do when you go there is you can get anything from flowering trees to palm trees. They're delivered right to your door. There's no mess, no hassle. You don't have to get up and like go to the, the uh, nursery and go find a way to transport this. If you've been looking for that plant, I know for me, I've gotten a ficus for the house. I know that I've gotten a lemon tree. Um, <clears throat> I've had a few, quite a few actually plants and the shrubs as well for privacy. It's absolutely helped me to, to be able to have a better environment a nicer home, and it, of course, brings up the livelihood. And it's delivered straight to your door. There's over 1.5 million satisfied customers. If you go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash SO, that's F-A-S-T-G-R-O-W-I-N-G-T-R-E-E-S dot com slash SO. That's fastgrowingtrees.com slash SO. <clears throat> get 15% off right now the entire store. Get something in time, even for Mother's Day. Get them, a, get them, get them something. Order your mom. If you don't know what to get her, order her a, a dope plant. That's actually not a... It's not a bad idea, right? Just order her a cool, don't like, don't get plant. her a dope plant. Don't no, get her a dope plant. Don't get her a dope plant. Get her a, a cool plant that is dope, but not literally. Like that. Yep. We encourage you. Check it out. Fastgrowingtrees.com slash so. All right. These next uh, stories, you uh, you actually uh, these are things that are kind of funny that we're gonna look at here. They're kind of insane. These are videos that made me laugh. We'll see if they make you laugh. I don't know what happened to the West when people cared, right? Anytime somebody cares about anything, we call them Karens now because they are caring about what's going on. Oh, that's right? nice. Yeah, they are caring. Yeah. But I do like the idea of going back to a civilization where people did care about the quality of their neighborhoods. Like people don't care anymore, right? If, if their cities are just trashed, there's people just like stabbing people, shooting people, and people don't, they don't care enough. I say we don't have enough Karens. We have, uh, we've, we've, we're, we have checkouts, not Karens. Mm -hmm. It's checked out. I don't know if you saw this video. Did you see this? Oh, I just, I just saw it before the show started. I don't know who posted it, but it's fantastic. Let's please watch it. Yeah, this is a, this is a, a woman from the council. I believe this is the United Kingdom, and she is uh, concerned about the safety of her house. And I got to say, I'm on the woman's side on this one. 
Go out there, love. You can't park here, darling. What do you mean I can't park here? Well, you've got no parking permit and you'll get towed away. I'm just trying to help you. Okay, yes. but I live here. Yeah. If you lived here, you'd have a residence parking permit. Yeah, but I'm saying I've just moved here. Really? How can you afford to move? <laughs> somebody well, like you. This is a very nice car. It's filthy. Base, somebody you, like you. You can understand why I was suspicious of you. Well, why? Because if you own this car, you but would not let car. it get filthy like this. But yeah, but it's just a dirty car. That's it. Like it, it, it don't I matter. know, but the people around here will judge you by a dirty car. Okay, so you so, so so you're admitting yeah, you're judging me because my car is dirty. Yes. Okay, but then you just said that because I'm a young guy as well. Yes. So you're judging yes. me because I'm a young man. In a nice car, in a nice area, and because cars do. Yes. Yes. And you think that's okay? Yes. Hmm? Absolutely. Oh, love and if you don't want to have to explain yourself all the time, one, no, no, get yourself a residence parking permit and get your car clean. So plenty of power and people around here. If you're earning so much money, then why can't you afford to get someone, one of the local kids, to wash this car for you on a regular basis? I can Real. give you some very good contacts. No, 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 but, no, but like. it's because the car is black, it, it gets dirty fast. <laughs> now, when did you last wash it? No, no, maybe Come a week on ago. Now, when did you last wash it? You're too busy business. making loads of money. No, no, no. Can I just say this on this video? I would like mm. to take this approach to every social issue. Like, yeah. we'd be like, you know what I mean? Like, this is how you should behave. But it's like, what do you mean? Like, so you're thinking I look suspicious? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm suspicious. Why? Because of the way I'm dressed? Yes. Yeah. Oh, because I, you know, I can't just walk around with my pants hanging below my waist and a, and a backpack in your store and you think I'm going to steal? Yes. Yeah. Why do you think so? Well, because if you were somebody who wasn't going to steal, you probably wouldn't be dressed like that. <laughs> but it's like, it, it, first of all, it's England. So we have to realize that England just has a separate system in history as far as class that we do. Like, we don't we don't have that here. So They have she, that here by in her, Australia, though, I'll tell you that. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I don't know how the accents go, but judging by her accent, she seems, I don't know where they are, but he's like, hey, oh, how you doing, love? You're doing all right. You know, that kind of like little bit of, uh, what do they call that? Um, you know, what, what's that accent? The Cockney, a little it's, bit of Cockney, a, it's, it's right? A, a little chub. In right. The... So she's going, she's doing more of the hello, love. So, uh, you know, you can't park it if you don't have the uh, resident sticker. And she's yeah, she like, well, what do you mean? I don't, wait, what, it don't, what do you mean? I can't park it because, you know, I've got a nice car, whatever, blah, 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 whatever. And that whole thing is, it's, it's all about class. She's like, listen, you're not welcome here. Get your sticker, get your car washed, get the hell out of here. That's how gets, I feel. I, I agree. Listen to this. It gets so good. No, it's, it's, it's nothing to do with that, but it's none of your business, though, is it? Yes, it is, actually, because I'm part of the Neighborhood Watch, and I look out there for you things go. like this. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> she opens the door. just having to sit down. <laughs> for what reason? Just because I'm old. Oh, now then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, can you, like, not... Well, you can sit there if you want. It's fine, it's fine. You can sit there. You can sit there. I'm old. How's your day going? My day's not going terribly well. Well, why? What I think not I'll going do, terribly though, well. if you're so sure that this is your car... But this is my car, I'll yeah. Go, no, but, you know, I've got a local kid who comes and washes cars regularly. You've got, you've, you've got a local kid? Yeah. What does that mean? I've got a nice young man called Jason who comes around and washes Little my car Jason. once a week. Yep. So, can I give you a number to Jason and he can... You know, if you just... Give me a phone number. I'm sure you've got a card. How, how old is Jason? 19. Oh, okay, okay. He's at university. He's studying sociology. Okay. But for a, a speci uh, just to keep himself going and so he doesn't get to be a drain on his parents, he goes out and washes cars at the weekend. I give him a fiver and he does a really good job with mine. I'm okay. Ten quid if he wants to do the inside as well. I'm okay. You should really, no, no, really I'll go wash think it. about I'll, it. I'll go wash it, yeah, but I'd rather get it washed properly than from Jason little boy Jason. Jason does a terrific job. You should see the equipment he's got. Yeah, I know, but like, little boy Jason, like, Jason. It, it just doesn't sound promising, does it? Listen, I'm an old lady. And if you've got so much money that you could afford a car like this, you could afford 10 quid a week to keep it really nice. I'll love I'll see you in a bit, Real. yeah? Yes. Yeah. If it's, I see you again with a dirty car, though, I will stop you because I'm a member of the local community watch. Imagine being in a society what? where, like, people did, like, care. Like, I mean, I usually am against the Karens, but it's like, dude, like, can, what if we actually cared a little more? Like, what if we actually did care about our society and, and a woman like that sees her country slipping and she sees that there's, like, some young chav coming in the neighborhood, can't even wash his car. And it makes you sad because you're like, this is not how our society works.
that was probably one of the more pleasant exchanges <clears throat> I've seen in a while. And that she had no element of Karen in her, uh, apart from your new definition of Karen, which is, you know, not caring enough. She cared she cared all of it. She cared, she cared plenty. Um, but that was a really pleasant exchange. And it, it, a little bit when she took that seat makes me kind of think that it was staged, but, uh, if I hope it's not, I hope that that was a real no. interaction. Dude, you, you know, what's, you know, what's one of the interesting things that I, so while I, I still think that the United States is the best country in the world and I can't wait to get back. Um, because I'm not like, there are very, there are very, there are a lot of pros to the way Europeans and European colonies like New Zealand and, and uh, you know, British colonies like, like Australia function in the terms of, you know, like one good thing is that they actually like care about their coffee, right? And things like, like sitting mm. down and having a good cafe. Like I always thought it's weird in America that there's so many places to eat that aren't actually good. They don't make good food. New York is, is different mm. like that. New York, you don't have good food. You're not going to survive in the city. You have to make good food. But in a lot of places in the U.S., it's just a lot of like Applebee's and bad places that don't taste good and they just survive. Australia, in a lot of European countries, care about quality, right? Like here, the bakery is separate from the grocery store and the bread lasts like four days because they don't have whatever's in it in the U.S. that makes it last, you know, a long time. And if you look at the ingredients of some of the same foods in the U.S. and here, this has like four ingredients. The U.S. has 32 and you don't recognize any of them mm. and I don't know why. On the flip side, they have a Taco Bell here, and it actually tastes healthy. That's scary, and it doesn't taste very good. It just tastes like you're eating, like, proper beef. I want fake beef mm. if I'm going to eat Taco yep. Bell. I like it because it's fake, and I'm eating microplastics. That's why I eat Taco Bell. It's to consume microplastics. Oh, interesting. But I'm okay. saying, so I don't, well, I don't I... want a healthy I don't want healthy Taco Bell. Like, do you know what I'm saying? It's pros and cons. It's like, it's like and, and, the, and because it's slower, cold, these, these cultures are slower. They're not convenience-based. They don't have grind culture. Like, in London, mm -hmm. yes. Like in Sydney mm -hmm. center, sure. But the like townships right. in around are very much like lifestyle centered. They're relaxed. They're chilling. It's like Italy. It's like Greece. This is why the West is collapsing. Yeah. Because everyone's like on a relaxation. But there's one thing that they do not do in these countries. And that is they're not violent and they're very peaceful. But that's changing because there's certain groups of people that have entered the country and a lot of the people, I'm, I'm not joking, even out here in the UK, they're really shocked at how quickly their countries went from safe nations where everyone chilled and drank good coffee to suddenly, like someone was telling me last night, like, dude, someone was just stabbed right there at the bus stop. They just, this like, this like dark skinned guy just put a dagger in someone's neck and there hasn't been a murder here in like decades. And I'm like, mm. get, used, get used to it, buddy. It's going to be more wow. often now. And I think that's what I'm saying. Like, there's there's a, a sense of like pride and ownership that have that have given them the the peace to live that life, and that's why they feel superior to Americans because they're like, well, we don't have guns and we don't have this, and we just have good coffee and we're rich too and we have a good life. And it's like, I bet you're gonna wish you wanted you had guns real soon because <laughs> yeah. your yeah, life is slipping, yeah. buddy. <laughs> yeah, I do agree with you on the food. Uh, today was my wife's birthday, so uh, we had a reservation for, oh, thank you. We had a reservation for a very fancy place to eat, but instead we decided to go for some Australian cuisine. It was really, it was a last minute change. And she said, babe, can we just go to Outback? I'm really craving some French onion soup and some steak. So I get what you're saying. So I, I, we have, we share that commonality in Australian food. So we had Outback tonight and I, you know, I get what you're saying. Yeah, but I'm, but like, but it is it is crazy because I I totally understand why um, Europeans like have that elitism over like they have that classism that just steeps in in centuries and centuries. Like no one understands mm -hmm. how expensive it is here. For instance, uh, like a four bedroom, two bathroom house in Sydney sold for fifty million dollars the other day. It's on a, and that's Australian, but that's still thirty million U.S. The, the housing market here is one of the most insane things I've ever seen in my entire life. I've never seen anything quite like it. But I will say that, you know, it's very hard to get ahead in European countries and European-centric societies. They don't have vertical mm -hmm. movement. So if you're going right. to come into a neighborhood that's wealthy, it's like 
the governors here, their families have been governors and in European right. colonies since the 1700s. Like it, it, no one gets it, but it's not like America where it's a newer nation and the people like, even though Australia is a newer nation, it's very much just like a British colony. It's what it is. It's really Britain. Yeah. The United States is its own country. It is not a British colony. The United States is the United mother effing States of America. Like there are eagles. And Correct. We, sh we shoot, we shoot cholesterol filled bullets at, you know, at, at, at minorities and stuff. That's what the U.S. does. We Aren't you kind of jealous, though, of that class <laughs> structure? Like, that's what's so attractive about the medieval grind set, you know? I wish I was born into a specific class because there's really nothing I can do about it. I can't necessarily marry up unless I'm, like, a hot young woman. I can't really I can't really do anything. So I accept my situation. I accept the class that I'm born into, and I just make the best of it. Medieval grind set, you know? I kind of, I kind of, over here in America, there's too much pressure for upward mobility. There's too much pressure to be an entrepreneur in order to be able to afford the house that we can no longer afford, like our grandparents or parents parents did. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually becoming less of a fan of the American system and American capitalism and more of a fan of, you know, that uh, European way of living. I don't know. Am I wrong? Did I lose well, a lot of people? No, 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 no. See, and I don't care about losing people anymore in terms of like, I just want to be completely honest. So no, but I'm with you on this. So, so what I was going to say is I, I do love, I do love living in a society that is, this is a classist society. Like they actually have a, a, a word like tall poppy syndrome. So what Australians do, but what's crazy is Australians, you don't want to cross them, even though they're nice people. Like if they feel like you took the spotlight from them or like you're in the spotlight and you shouldn't be, they'll go try to like rip you down like a lobster. Like they'll try to rip your legs off and destroy your life. And it's this like nasty Australian side of like, keeping people in their class. So like if somebody's mm. like, you know, like like you're you you would dislike somebody, let's just say for driving a nice Porsche when they're like new money and they maybe just like bought this Porsche and you're like, "What the hell are you doing? That's not your class. That's not who you are. You weren't born into that. You're just trying to be something you're not." And there's this like pull and it goes with with the corporate ladder too. If you work with someone who's Australian and they feel like they don't want you to be in the position you're in, they'll feel like you there's not like a vertical movement even in the corporate structure they'll like people will rip will rip you apart they'll like destroy try to destroy your entire life and it's called like tall poppy syndrome and it leads to very nasty class battles of people and i know and i know a lot of australians and it's a very nasty side of of the culture that people don't see though which is that upward mobility is very difficult however the reason why they mock america is because there's a lot less poverty in Australia, like there's a lot less. Poor is that a people. question? No, I'm saying there's a lot less poor people, but there's a lot less really wealthy people. So like, it's like the top uh. and the bottom are smaller, but everybody's like equal. It's a socialist society, right? I don't. I'm not pro socialism, gotcha. but it's like everyone's doing all right basically, uh, but no one's doing that great, and no one's doing that poorly. Like that's kind of how the society well, is structured. It's like class. What a class system uh, uh, is. Um, I'm okay with bringing people back down to earth. So I, under, I understand that aspect of the Australian mentality. If it's like people flashing new money, bring them back down to earth. Kind of because I, I, that sort of vanity is really, really disgusting to me. And, you know, I know people here who, who do that. And it's kind of like, I, I don't know the flex. I don't know if you're trying to flex. That's not the flex you think it is, I guess. So maybe I'm misunderstanding the context. But yeah, I, uh, I, I, I can get with it. I understand that. Yeah, I like Amer I, so my goal is I like American society better, but I just want a vacation here. Like I just want like a one month a year to like be in a place where people are not trying to make more money and they're not trying to grind and they just want to drink coffee and hang out. But when you live in it, it's like people look at me like it's like, oh, you're an American. Like nobody talks about money. Mm -hmm. Nobody's like about like there's no networking. Like it's just not how people are. And I'm like, I need to get back to the United States very quickly because people uh. here just want to chill. And you also find out too, by the way, with my new street video, this is like the craziest atheist society ever. And like the average body count last night was like somewhere between 30 and 50 of the people I spoke to. It's probably one of the most insane places in terms of like, just like uh, the cultural I mean, Western revolution. Everyone here is like an atheist with a body count. People said that like they, they thought that like probably a good place to stop before you get married is like 100, 120 was the average answer I got. Like 120 sex partners I, before you uh, get married is probably where you should cap. 
Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't have said that. And by the looks of me, I understand you might think that this is cap, but I probably somewhere around that almost triple digit number years ago. But I, I had a different life. A lot of people don't know this. I had a different life where I was working in in a, in the entertainment business, and I traveled around. I get that. I was a hedonist, and I was an agnostic, not necessarily an atheist. But yeah, I probably would have been one of those people. Not good. Three hundred sixty. No, no, sir, no. I'm not no, gonna that's, ask that's, that. that's that's ridiculous. No, but, <laughs> and I'm not gonna say, but I'm just. But I, but I do bring up the fact is, is that that's why I had to take a picture with this group of people. If you're just getting the live, is because you know usually Australians are very attractive people, but I, you know, found this amazing group of attractive people on the side of the road. Isn't this such an epic group of people? Isn't this like Western civilization in a photo? Isn't that like modern Western? Yeah, I, that's like modern that's Western. Modern, yeah, that's modern Western I got civilization. It. You're right, though, about Australia. And was, the last time I was in Australia was 2013. And I was there working with a very, very, very famous musician. And I remember go, we were, our first show was in Brisbane. And when we went out to the club that night, we had a group of 30 girls who I want to say the worst was a seven. It, it, I, I get that. What you said was accurate. Australia is full of very, very attractive women. Yes. Um, and, and I'd the- say about... Three out of the eight there. I can't really see how many there are. <laughs> we're but, not sure yeah. if they're all women, but they were nice. No. And that's the nice thing. Just Australians are one of the nicest people. Like, they're all very kind. Oh, they're so nice. They're all very They're like, so nice. They. I got a lot of hugs slang. last night. I love a lot it. of hugs. A lot of hugs. A lot of mates. A lot mm-hmm. of wishing me good luck and good wishes uh, and having a good time. Dude, this is going to be an epic video. I'm, I'm back doing street content, and I'm really excited because... I'm back to myself. I'm back to being a buffoon again on the streets with the people. I've been pushing it off, and now I decided to just go full force because we gotta get we gotta get we gotta get street content out there, and we got well, some good viral for you, and content. that yeah, that should be good because now you're a new you're a guy in a new land. You know, no one really knows of you over there. I'm sure. I'm at least I think that they probably don't. You know, they're not aware of who you are, so a lot of guards will be down, so to say. Oh yeah. And the questions we're asking are absolutely phenomenal, too. Let's look at some of the crazy stuff that didn't make it into the funny thing. This is WTF videos and topics I don't understand. But they're weird, and they make it into the show. Let's see. We got we had a longer first segment. So this will be short. Um, I just want to say these, uh, <laughs> OF, scale. yeah, these OF, uh, people have like life, Western life has gotten out of hand. Uh, this video is pretty crazy. This is like the life, a day in the life of like an, an OnlyFans girl. And it's, well, okay, just watch this. This is the, the armpit hair is already enough for me, but just watch. Here's a day in my life as a content creator who makes $20,000 a month, spends nearly none of it. I'm gonna be super brutally honest about how I spend my day and not sugarcoat anything, even my bad habits. I wake up with the sun and start promoting on different subreddits. I've already made about $450 today while I was sleeping. Then I had someone request some customs. They wanted pictures of me in this red bikini, so that motivated me to get up and take some photos. And then I went right back to bed to edit them. I don't put on makeup, I don't get ready, I am just get up and go. Then I cashed out on my cash app and texted my boyfriend because he's actually on the way to see me here in Ecuador. Checked my email and saw that my APY went up on my high yield savings account so that's dope. Then I decided to take a break and do some exercise. I don't have a yoga mat, so this is what we're working with. I set up around the pool area below my house. Fun fact, I actually only paid $718 to stay here for a month. I'm in a rural fishing village about six hours from Quito, Ecuador. Here I am just doing my abs and my Pilates. But just wait until you see this view. Like, is this not gorgeous? So then I take a shower and put on the same exact shirt I was wearing before. And I start making my breakfast. It's my fruit on the bottom moment. I pour my probiotic yogurt and my stevia sweetened granola. I broke a nail while I was cutting the strawberry, so now I have to cut that off. Ow. But then I ate my breakfast and responded to some more messages. I head over to my really messy unpacked suitcase and I step right over that. <laughs> then I head outside to my hammock with an SJM book. And I get cozy to read for an hour. But then I got hungry again, so I made myself a cucumber prosciutto sandwich. I went back to the hammock and responded to messages. I got an audio request from a guy who really likes handcuffs. So here I am trying to find things that sound like them until I finally found something that sounded just like them and recorded my custom audio. For that, I started getting my place ready for my boyfriend to arrive. Packed up that suitcase. I had a meeting with my real estate agent in Costa Rica to review some properties. Then I lost power and it was really dark. So I used my hotspot to watch Game of Thrones and waited for my boyfriend to arrive. And it was a really good day. I made $900. Please. Oh, you told me not to curse, I, so I, I'm 
really trying not to. How is that I let tolerable? One slip. I let one slip, but I am trying to be good on that. We got to do it for our kids. We got to have control over our mouths for our kids. Imagine, imagine paying for the OnlyFans and then seeing her put out that content. I would, I, I'd renege. I'd, I'd cancel. I'd cancel the subscription. You what? I'd renege. Oh, renege. I don't know. I think did I say it wrong? That. Yeah, I think you did. <laughs> well, I'm from, I'm from the Northeast, so that's. <laughs> Clip it. Oh, man. Yeah, and JRock77 said, Elijah, missed you, man. Glad I found you again. Yeah, a lot of people don't. You know what's the problem when you're not in algorithms? When you take a break and you come back, your viewership goes down because no one knows you're back on the internet. Like, you go back in your videos, and then, mm. like, people, like, find you, like, a year later, and, like, holy crap, dude. I thought you stopped making videos. And you're like, no, I just stopped for a, a few weeks, but I am here. And then they just, like, don't know that you're back on. That's why I decided I need to do street content because I need to create some viral clips so that people can remember we're still on the air because you know, mm. we have nine people watch this show still. So that's pretty cool. Right. You know, nine people. That's more than more than my live stream. So yeah, great. <laughs> yeah. We get nine people. You're in the on top 1%. I'm the top 1%. And it's like OnlyFans, except there's no, there, I don't make handcuff noises. I could though. If it why would, do, if why it do they, help, why do they all it. talk like that? What, like, Should you do that? Oh, actually, can you find Josh Lacash made a video exactly like that showing a day in yeah. his life? I don't know if you've seen it, but I'll you should bring it. that up yeah. just yeah, to show it. I would love to. That's really the interesting to. content that we all want to see. Yeah, you mean the day, his day in the life of... Uh... <clears throat> yes, yeah, yeah. His day in the life. Did he call himself a, an influencer, though, of a social media influencer? Is yeah, that what I he think, said? Oh, here it is, here it is. This is Josh Lacash. There we go. Day in the life. Let's go ahead and bring this up. Hey everyone, this is a day in the life of a racist <laughs> podcaster. Started off at the world famous <laughs> Chateau Marmont in Los Angeles, California, where my boss splurged on us and we got to stay there for free. The food there is amazing. Yeah, just look at the menu over there. Wow. And this is my friend Ryan. He does such an amazing Donald Trump impression. I'll show you guys later. And yeah, this is the room. It's uh, beautiful. Oh, this is our boss Gavin, just chilling like a villain with his balls out as per tradition. He's such a grump and uh, oh yeah, so this is Ryan and his amazing Trump impression. It's so funny you guys Frankly, I'm looking up into the air right because we're wondering what's going on. So that's what I'm doing Oh, here's Gavin again. He's so disgusting. He pees into a cup before showtime because he gets nervous and then he throws <laughs> the pee out onto the sidewalk where his fans are standing. It's so funny. And yeah, back at the chateau and, you know, we're just grabbing some food. It's so good. And yeah, that's a day in the life of a racist podcaster. I love it. I charge one kid <laughs> love it. as a goof. Is that a... <laughs> who did that? Who charged that amount of money? What who is it? That? Oh, jeez. What? My favorite part of that when he says, "This is my friend Ryan doing a Trump impression." I'll show you guys later. That that made it for me. The fact that he knows how these girls talk. They just bring up these stupid. I, I can't even talk about it anymore. I'm sorry. He spends too much time on TikTok. Josh Lacash needs help. He needs he needs help. I'm gonna. You know what? This is should I make official, a TikTok? I don't know. Yeah, you should be like, dude. I think here's the deal. Is like I said, if people know I'm like working on rebranding the whole show, and I'm kind of like that's even with the street content, working on kind of like a relaunch and a re 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 uh, producting of what we're doing because I've been kind of just cruising here on the internet while my kid is born, and figuring out where I want to go with these things. But you ought to understand, we have a lot to do. We have a lot to go about, and I find that I find the future to be very bright. The future is very good because as long as you enjoy making content, that's what matters the most. As long as you enjoy your job, as you enjoy what you do. And that's what I think with these OnlyFans people is I don't think they enjoy anything. I think they enjoy making it look like they enjoy it. And and, and it's like, because that's not a good life. They're like adult babies in the fact that, like, like I'd say this is a grown woman, right? And it's like, I get up. I don't do, I don't do crap. I don't put on makeup. I bent over, showed a little bit of my underwear. I got back into bed. You're like, man, this is called depression. Okay, so let's keep going. Mm -hmm. We call this clinical mm -hmm. depression. And then I got back into bed and then like I got up and I used, I'm in like a shack. I only spent $700 on this, ma'am. You're in a, you're in a homeless encampment and uh, mm -hmm. in Ecuador, like, oh, I'm supposed to be like, unless you're Ecuadorian, like I don't want to be in Ecuador. Like there's no reason to be there. Like people are like, why are yeah. you in Australia? Okay. First of all, Australia is a very cool country. 
it's very modern. It's just not wasn't cool the last few years, and it's not going to be cool long term. But we're in a short window where it's cool again, and then you got to get the hell out again. But it's like, and she goes on going like, yeah, and then I made like some audios with handcuffs, like a baby, right? She played with keys. And mm-hmm. and then my boyfriend, you know, came over because it's now his turn, right? It's not, that's not his girl. It's just his turn for the day. And he's like, now my boyfriend's coming over. He's a total cuck. And I laid and I made a little sandwich <laughs> and the power went out. Bitch, you're in the third Ooh. world. You're in the third world showing your vagina, the vagina to people. And then... You like woke up and you like you're you're she's the type of girl who's doesn't know what she wants to eat and her tummy always hurts. Mm. You know those girls and she's always taking naps. Oh, it's the worst yeah. kind. It's the that's my tummy hurts. Oh, I don't know what I want to eat. I'm tired. Me tired. I want to take a nap. We're about to get back to it's 16th accept- century it- executions if you don't stop. Yeah, it's acceptable for pregnant women only when they don't know really know what to eat and they want to nap all the time. And they got tummy troubles. It's acceptable for only pregnant women, not 20-somethings making key jingling ASMR. That is, like you said, a sign of depression and a sign of mental illness. I'm just, I, I can't me help hungry. but think about the guys who me are paying hungry. for this. I just, I don't get it. Dude, this is the kind of girl that says, me hungry. Me hungry. Yeah, you, you think so? Yeah, you don't talk. We, don't. The baby voice works in a very rare situation, but like, don't use it often, girl. You could mm. you could use it as a joke, maybe, but don't say me hungry unironically. Do you think she makes twenty grand a month? Yeah, it's not that hard to do. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been watching nine hundred dollars that day. She makes anywhere between maybe eight hundred or fifteen hundred a day. If she does it five days a week, that's forty five hundred. Yeah, that's forty five hundred a week. Yeah, if she does it five days a week and she gets nine hundred dollars, it's forty five hundred times times four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And she probably gets a couple of big tips, like 500 bucks for some weird requests. And they're always mm-hmm. mid too, you know? And I, I don't, I really don't like commenting yes. on whether girls are attractive or not, because I, like, I feel like it's very, what makes a woman attractive is very different than what makes her sexy. Right. Cause sexy would be just considered like outward appearance and it's sexual energy sure. and like sort of like traditional hotness. Right. Like if you would ask a 16 year old boy, what a hot girl is. But, like, beauty and attractiveness can be wrapped up in a lot of attributes. Like, I mean, girls don't realize how sexy, really, and how attractive cooking skills are. And I mean that genuinely. Okay. All right. Yes. That's great. You don't, we know you're you're not gay. You don't have to explain what you think makes a girl sexy or attractive. Maybe I am. It's okay. Maybe maybe I am. And that's the thing. You can't judge me (laughs) because you're not allowed to judge me anymore because then I have to actually go out there and, and, and make an OnlyFans, right? And go out in the mm-hmm. world. By the way, to remind you, the person that had the lowest body count last night was a gay guy. So you know we're getting into a bad, into a bad situation in life where gay men have a lower body count than women. Okay, that's a very we're getting into a very, very bad category. Yeah. But well, the gays the gays are getting boring. So that's what I'm saying. But I but I but I mean this yeah. with like attractiveness is like like there's a lot of qualities, but this woman has none. Like she doesn't know how to cook. Mm-hmm. She doesn't know how to keep the power on. She doesn't even know where to live. And she's like, <laughs> looks boring and she doesn't shave. And it's like, why even demean yourself? Like, like, let alone her boyfriend, right? Why even demean yourself to get sexual favors for free? Why were I you I want to know what the boyfriend looks like. I want to know what the boyfriend looks like. And I want to know what the average fan and supporter of her looks like. Because I can guess. Don't look like me or you. We could be cousins, kind of. Me and you? Mm Mm-hmm. Maybe. Facial hair? No, we could just be cousins. Because it's like... Oh, we could be, yeah. Snarky, somewhat black-pilled mustache people. Mm. I'm not black-pilled, though. I don't want to give the impression that I'm black-pilled. (laughs) Christ-pilled. Yeah. (laughs) All right. As we jump into that, uh, we're going to go over to, uh, we're going to switch the show, the rest of the show, over to Rumble only. But for people that are on YouTube right now, the music's about to play. Tell them where they can find and follow you as we switch over to Rumble. You want them, like, to give them my address? Okay. My address is 3756. Try that one more time. Tell them where to find you on on, on the internet. 
Okay. Oh, on the internet. Sure. Um, yeah. On Instagram, you can go to the new nation podcast and you could do the same thing on YouTube. It's just youtube.com slash the new nation podcast. I think it's, Oh, look, it's right there. That's where it is. So just, you know, click that little joint. No, don't click it. Cause I don't think that works, but just type all that information in. There might be a link in this video, the new nation. There you go. Now we're redoing it, you know, and now people go over to rumble.com for the rest of the show.